Yep. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Friend of the show uh, has been on many, many times. Uh, Media Days is always kind of a circus, and we uh, appreciate you after all this week and everything. Always making time for us. Paul Catalina, Craig Smokey here. Smokey is uh, on vacation in Florida. And uh, Coach, um, how do you... Do you like media days? Do you have fun with it? Or is it just one of those things that you, you kind of have to get through like a dentist appointment? I don't think it's a dentist appointment, (laughs) but it's not something that, you know, if you had to pick, would you do it or not do it? (laughs) You'd not do it, but it's always good to go with Frank Harris and Rashad wisdom. You know, those guys are so wonderful to be around and, uh, you understand it's just kind of part of the deal and it kind of lets you know, football season's kicking off. So, there's a lot of good things about it as well. So there you were, uh, by far not the only newcomer there in Arlington, but uh, you got a bunch of schools, Charlotte, FAU, UNT, Rice, UAB, UTSA, the new American Athletic Conference. Uh, what was your experience like uh, just being a part of the AAC, the media, and, and all that came with that? Uh, you know, just more, uh, bigger, uh, just more just more interviews, <laughs> bigger interviews, you know, probably a little more national. Um, very well organized. You can tell that, you know, what Commissioner Oresco has done there and how he's, you know, pounded on the table for those guys for so long. And like I was telling some media people, it's not like what he's saying is not accurate. He's got skins on the wall. So he can boast about what that league's done for a decade now. And it's not just somebody talking. He's got, he's got some evidence to back it up, like with Coach Fritz and Tulane last year in the Rose Bowl beating USC. You guys have, have hit the ground running when it comes to entering the new conference. Do you do you feel – I mean, obviously, you know, there'll be some different competitions, some people you're not used to, um, new things that you'll see. But do you feel like you are at a point where it shouldn't, as far as your preparations, change too much than what you've been doing for the last couple of years? Well, the league's deeper. Uh, you'd be crazy to not admit that. Uh, East Carolina, South Florida, Temple – you know, Tulane, SMU, Memphis, those guys have been playing football for, you know, over 100 years. And we've been playing football for 12. So there's going to be, you know, some stuff where we've got to get caught up with as far as just our uh, infrastructure and budget and those type of things. On the field, I think we've got a good football team. Um, and I think that will if we stay healthy, which is everybody in this business, I think we'll be able to compete. Uh, so that's what we're looking forward to. How many people who just don't know the history of UTSA are surprised when they hear you say, well, we've only been around for 12 years in comparison, like you said, to institutions uh, all across college sports that have been around for, for decades and, and a century in some cases? Well, it's funny you said that. You know, J.J. Perez, who does a great job of covering us, he mentioned that to me. He's like, Coach, you might want to remember, you're going to be speaking to a lot of people that don't know anything about us. Mm-hmm. You're, gonna, you're used to speaking to a group that's always heard about us. So you not you might want to go back in there and retell the story a little bit. So when I took the podium and I said that exact statement uh, out of the probably I don't know how many people were out there. Let's just say approximately fifty to seventy five reporters were out there. I'd say you know three fourths of them's head kind of went back and their eyes got big <laughs> when I said we'd only been playing football for twelve years. They had no idea. In your team, you don't have in your display case. You don't have an old leather helmet. <laughs> and I like a, a no. cracked black and white picture of a bunch great of dudes point. with broken legs. Yeah, like yeah just great point. <laughs> yeah, you guys, it, this is our helmet from 12 years ago. This is it now. It's a little bit different. Well, we call them the original 18, <laughs> and uh, we, we know who they all are. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a picture of them in our facility, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty cool because the original 18, you know, usually when you hear that, you think about the four horsemen. Yeah. Our original 18 was about 12 years ago, honestly. <laughs> You mentioned Frank Harris, and uh, he's obviously a veteran at this point of, of everything. Uh, but is there – I know there's excitement and confidence in him, but how do you as a coach uh, and, and as a person, uh, is there a finality or is there any part of you that's like, hey, this is the last time me and Frank are going to be at media days? Or, or is that all just, hey, after the season's over with, we'll you know have our heart-to-heart or whatever and, and, and you know deal with those emotions? No, it hit me a little bit just on this trip. Him and I and Rashad have been doing media days together. Now, this is three years in a row for us. Mm-hmm. Now, we didn't get to do it that first year because of COVID. Uh, but this is three years uh, for us to do that. And uh, when I was dropping them off with their vehicles when we landed, um, both of them were like, Coach, don't tear up on us. And I'm like, well, boys, this, 
this really is the last time this time. There's no more COVID years, yeah. medical years. We've ridden this thing out as far as we can together, boys. <laughs> so there's no doubt uh, that will have a place in time. But, yeah, anytime we do anything together right now, we know it's going to be the last time we do it for that moment. He has been – the, I mean, especially when you come into a place and you're the new coach, you don't know who the the leader um, of the team is necessarily going to be or how that's going to jive with you. Could you have picked a better situation than Frank Harris for you personally coming into UTSA? No, no way. Uh, no way. I mean, especially I'm being a San Antonio kid from Shirts Clemens. Uh, the underdog story, all the, all the knee surgeries, all the shoulder surgeries, just the human that he is. Uh, his Mr. and Mrs. Harris are two of the best people you ever meet in your life. And then Rashad Wisdom, you got to throw him in there as well from Converse Judson. Yeah. Again, raised by two amazing people. Uh, and those two kids, anybody could coach those kids. Uh, I was just very blessed. They were, they landed right in my lap when I got here. You mentioned, uh, you know, what uh, JJ Perez told you about, hey, let, let people know a little bit about UTSA on the field. What was, I guess, the message you were trying to get across or the information you were trying to get across uh, to those who are learning about UTSA and, and want a little bit of preview of what they're going to see when they see the Roadrunners? I'm sure there was some triangle of toughness mentions and things of that nature, but what's kind of the, the messaging surrounding this 2023 team for Jeff Trailer and UTSA? I've never backed off uh, from being a head coach. You know, 15 years at Gilmer, uh, to going on year four, uh, you don't win all these games without having a bunch of really good players. And I've got a bunch of really good players. That's mm-hmm. how you win. So, I, you know, I didn't back off of that. We got 16 kids that were preseason all-conference, and I was raving about the ones that didn't make it. Uh, we got some D-linemen I think are really good that didn't make it. So that's that's where I started. I also was very honest in the assessment. We should have been 14-0 and 0 last year, mm-hmm. uh, but we also should have been 4-10. and 10. I mean, we, uh, you know, we played Texas good to the fourth quarter. We couldn't last. So you could possibly say that was uh, a clear defeat. But so at the, at the worst, we should have been 13 and one. But we also could have been four and 10. We won a bunch of close ball games. The year before that, we were 12 and two. Uh, we could have been 13 and one. We also could have been three and 10. We, we've won an absolute amazing high percentage of one possession ball games. So we don't want to come across like we've got all the answers. We don't because we know how close we've been to losing. Uh, but at the same time, we are very proud of what we've done the last three seasons here. You have – this is – I mean, I'll call it a fun schedule. Like for, for an outsider that is going to watch you guys as much as I can. I think we talked about this last time a little gonna bit. It's going to be yeah. fun. But, um, I, I mean, I don't know how much it will be week to week, especially when I look at – you've got – as from a coach's perspective of – you know, Houston's going to run a, you know, a spread type offense. Texas State's going to do that. Then you've got to practice running the, you know, the army bone, whatever they call it. And then you've got to go back to that the next week against Tennessee. Your first few, that's, that's got to be an adventure for you and the staff. Yeah. And we get army on a Friday night. Oh, yeah. so you got a short <laughs> week, you got a short week on top of that. So that's been tough and already in our own minds we're preparing for it. Uh, then we go into you know a rugged conference play. We open up with Temple, we're going to Stan Drayton up there in Philadelphia, our very first conference game, and come back play UAB, who we beat in double overtime last year, and then we beat them on a tip pass to win the conference championship the year before that, and they beat us the three years ago. So that's you know our league and our schedule, and you know it is what it is. And uh, when you're a Texas high school football coach, you get put in a new league every two years. So it's not that big of a deal for me. I'm used to waiting for realignment day in February and finding out what my new district's going to be. So we know what our new league's going to be, and uh, we got to you know suck it up and go play it now. Based on a couple of things you just said, you're a former high school coach and also playing on a Friday night. I know that you were quoted. I think it was at the THS. Uh, THSCA convention um, just a few days ago. But you're not a fan of the Friday nights for college football, are you? Or, or did I read that wrong? No, it's terrible for us because yeah. we've only been playing ball for 12 years. I, I explained to the commissioner exactly what it's going to look like. You know, they're going to be out there at Smithson Valley uh, with Glenn West cheering for them with their t- their phones in their hand, uh, watching the Roadrunners play on Friday night. Uh, they're going to be at Converse Judson with Mark Soto with their phones out watching that. They're going to be, you know, Ron Ridderman at Alamo Heights. All his fans are going to have our phones out, you know, watching the Roadrunners play. It's going to hurt our attendance. I don't think it's going to hurt <laughs> Football <laughs> uh, they've been playing football over 100 years at those schools and doing it very well, I might add. 
So I don't think it's good for any of us. So I, I told him if we could to keep that thing on Thursdays or Saturdays. So, um, you know, the big sports news in San Antonio this summer is obviously Wemby's coming to the Spurs. But your city is sports crazy. Can you feel like the fervor as they build towards when you guys are going to start practicing and that first game at the Alamo Dome? Yeah, it's, you know, I was lucky enough to be chosen, you know, as the, uh, the whatever it's called for the Battle of Flowers, I guess, whoever, whatever you call that person that leads out the parade. That was me, right? Well, here you can see my country tail on its flow for six <laughs> of my football players. And uh, I promise you, I think the numbers were like 500,000 people all through the streets of, you know, San Antonio for that parade. And uh, I'm going to say 80% of them were birds up. I mean, it was just incredible how much our city uh, is for our kids. And it's a, it's a great environment, the Alamo Dome. It's 72 degrees every day. Your wind doesn't, doesn't bless up your hair. There's no rain. There's none of that. And it beats the heat, really. It just beats that Texas heat. And it's just an incredible environment. And our kids really love playing there. Uh, we've lost two home games in three seasons. Uh, we lost a triple overtime game to Houston last year that just gutted us, and we lost to Army our first year. So that's a pretty remarkable record uh, for our kids to be, you know, somewhere around 18 and 19 or 19 and 2, I think. 18 and 2, something like at home uh, in, three se- in three seasons so far. Yeah, you played in some crazy, crazy fun games. I know some of them have been heartbreaking on your end, but I mean, you've, you've been in some thrillers, and, and you will definitely, I'm sure, be in some again this year. Speaking of, and rounding, you know, back to that schedule, uh, do you as a coach know pretty quickly who your team is? Do you know that going into the season? Do you know that, let's say, after the first month wraps and, and you play at Knoxville, will you have an idea, or when does that kind of click into place? Is it a process for, for us non coaches? Can you kind of explain how you identify that? Well, you always got a pretty good indication. You think you know. But like last year, we were going to be a heavy run team, we thought. Uh, we thought we were going to be really good at running the football. And uh, you get out there and you lose four offensive tackles before the sixth snap of your first game. Mm-hmm. When you lose four offensive tackles, uh, we became the heaviest RPO team in the country for the next six weeks. We were just we were throwing it way more than we were running it. So everybody's like, yeah, the triangle is tough. And so I thought you said you were committed to running the football. Well, we are committed to running the football when we can run the football. Well, it's the same thing as defense, special teams. You kind of just kind of got to see where you are. Uh, and usually those first four games, you kind of get a good indication of that. But we think we know who we are. We've got a bunch of good players returning. We did lose a bunch of good ones too. Uh, but we're going to be a good football team if we're all healthy and standing. Coach, what was the, uh, the best thing you got to do this summer away from recruiting and coaching? Uh. Care Bear and I went to Turks and what is it, Chips and Queso, whatever Turks and Queso, <laughs> whatever that word is, man. That's the first time I've ever been. She knows I was raised on a on a farm and I love to ride horses, but I haven't been able to do that much as an adult because all I've ever done is coach. So she didn't really believe I knew how to ride a horse. So uh, she got us some horses to ride in Turks and Caicos and uh, whatever that word is. And yeah. we were riding them in the ocean and it, it was pretty surreal you know i lost my dad back in december but i thought mm-hmm. to myself he's got to be laughing right now watching me ride a horse <laughs> in an ocean at uh <laughs> at this chip and queso right now so that was pretty cool i love that gilmer texas will never leave you <laughs> i i love it that it's in your bones and in your soul coach thanks so much for for hopping on with us well we lo- love talking to you and we'll talk to you again soon i'll let david know how much i love him and uh praying for his brother uh god bless and birds up Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. That's uh, Coach Trailer uh, from UTSA, one of the f- great friends of the show. Really, I mean, and uh, 